All right, so I'm gonna show how to open up and disassemble this HP. Let's see, this is a HP Envy X360M convertible model 15M-BP112DX. All right, so we're gonna wanna remove all the screws from the bottom. Looks like the customer already tried opening it or something. Um, last time they brought it, it had some tape over here, but I guess they took it out themselves. All right, so we're gonna get a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. Normally you would peel off this rubber foot. It looks like they peeled off this one too, but they saw there's no screws under there. So yeah, and to keep the screws in order, just put them in the pattern that you see them on the bottom of the computer. So you see four here, just put them in a line on your desk. That's the easiest way to keep track of them. All right, we're also going to need a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. Okay, again, keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shapes, and lengths and that can cause damage if you put them back in the wrong spots. All right, we're gonna remove the screws down here as well. There's only three screws down here. Okay. All right, we're most likely gonna need a pry tool for this one. Let's try with a, let's see what I do with my suction cup. My stuff is all, I don't know what's going on. My tools are disappearing here. Um, okay, let's see here. Well, oh, here we go. Okay, so we're gonna try with a suction cup. Just grab that and we'll see. And you can see it doesn't wanna come out here. So it looks like we're gonna have to pry it up. Okay, most likely we won't be, oh, actually it comes out from this side. Hmm. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just getting my fingernails in this gap. You can use a pry tool and let's see, we can pull that up. Oops. Uh, I wasn't expecting that side to come up so easily. I don't know if the rest will come up that easily. It doesn't look like it. Nope. Okay. So, we're likely going to have to do, like on all the other models that are similar like this, is use a thin pry tool here to get into here. Um, it looks like the customer might have already tried prying this open. Normally I would get the tool in there and kind of pop this up, but it's already coming out. So I'm gonna use the tool along the side here while I pull it, as you've seen, like that. Okay, same thing, kind of pull this up. And while I'm pulling it, just slide the tool along the side gap there and kind of wiggle this around. It's caught there and there we go. So we got that out. It's pretty dusty inside here, so we're probably gonna have to clean that up. Um, his hard drive is failed, so we're gonna be replacing the hard drive. It is a two and a half inch SATA hard drive. His battery actually also looks like it's starting to go bad. Um, but yeah, hopefully he's not gonna have to replace too many things on this computer. Um, let's zoom in a bit. So we're gonna start with the hard drive here. We're gonna flip up this little latch. Once you flip that up, you can actually pull the cable back like this, all right? And then we can actually pull the hard drive out. So it's just in this rubber caddy. So you might have to like rock it from side to side to get it out. If it's stuck, which this one seems to be, oh, there we go. I just pulled on this and then I was able to get it. Sometimes I have to use a pry tool to get under there, all right? So we'll peel off this sticky adhesive part and we're gonna transfer over this connector here. So I just get my fingernail in there. You can use like a pry tool, but I use my thumb like to leverage on this piece here and then I just wedge it out like this, all right? Let me see if I can, it's hard to show this. Let's try on this side. Okay, there we go, so that side works. And then we're gonna go ahead and go down and then do the same with this side. Okay, just like that, there we go. So we got the connector out. You wanna be careful not to put pressure on this cable because you can damage it easily. All right, so once we get that out, we can get this and we will transfer it to the new SSD, okay? So this is a 480 gig uh, Crucial BX500 SSD. You can use any two and a half inch SATA hard drive for this, um, but I would highly recommend SSDs over hard drives, okay? So we're gonna set this aside. We don't need the foil stuff. That old hard drive's broken. So we'll just leave that over there. If they decide to recover the data later, they can. And then just put this rubber piece on the new drive, okay? 
just like that. Get those little rubber nibs into the screw holes. All right, just like that. Make sure that the rubber parts all end up on top. Okay, just like that. Okay, so we're gonna put the hard drive back. Actually, let me clean this up a little bit. Probably gonna wanna take this out and clean it up better because I don't want all this dirt in my work area. But anyways, we'll just push the hard drive or SSD back in. Make sure the rubber goes in the right place. There we go. And then we will get the connector back in. Line it up, all right, and then put the latch down. Okay, so now here we have, actually there's also an M.2 SSD slot here. Um, they don't specify if it's for uh, M.2 SATA or PCIe NVMe, but you can put an M.2 SSD here as well as a regular spinning drive if you just want more storage, or you can put both SSDs. Um, again, I don't know if this is a M.2 SATA or PCIe NVMe slot. Sometimes they will support both. Sometimes they will only support one. So the only way you'll know is either you have to experiment or maybe online on Google, you'll they'll have the answer. So you got the DC jack or charge port connector here. It's trapped underneath the hinge. Um, to get that out, you do have to take the speaker out. There's two screws here. You can take the speaker out and then you can undo the hinge and flip the hinge over to get the charge port out. But I'm not gonna remove that. Um, if you did need to remove that, you just grab the wings and you kind of just wiggle it to pull it out. All right, anyways, here's the RAM. So there's this metal cover on it. So what you do is you go on the side here and the gap I just get my fingernail under there and then I pop it up. You can use a plastic pry tool if you want. Don't use a metal pry tool. All right, there we go. And then you can kind of just wiggle this edge and pull this whole cover off. Um, so it looks like there's only one stick of RAM here. I don't know why they left this one. Um, there's supposed to be a slot here or actually sometimes they would solder the RAM down. So these are actually where they would solder memory it looks like. Um, and here we have a 16 gig PC4 2400T stick of RAM, okay? So if you wanted to change the RAM, just make sure it's PC4 2400T, and then you can get whatever size RAM you want. I don't know if they have 32 gig sticks since this is already 16 gigs. Um, I don't think you can really upgrade it much. All right, so we're just gonna put this cover back on. Make sure to line up those uh, metal um, clips so that you can get it clipped back in place. All right, just like that. There's the wireless card down here. The CPU is soldered in place, you can't replace it. Then you got the LCD LVDS connector here, and you got this connector for the speaker. So the speakers, it looks like it connects here, and then there's a wire that goes to this speaker that travels underneath the entire board. Let me zoom out actually. Okay, and then you got the battery or the fan. You can just wiggle the connector out just like the charge port one and the speaker connectors. Then you got the trackpad connector, the keyboard connector, and you got the keyboard backlight connector here. And then you got this connector here for the SD card slot. And then the battery LK03XL. So that's the battery model number if you need to replace it. Or you can also use the HP spare part number 916-814-855. All right, but that's pretty much all there is. I'm gonna clean out the dust and I'll be back and put it back together. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So I don't know what's stuck on there, but on the bottom cover, it wouldn't all come out. So if I wanted to get it out, I'd have to use like water or something. Anyways, uh, I forgot one connector here. There's this small connector. Um, this is either for the touchscreen or the webcam and everything the camera it doesn't really say there so yeah anyways that's pretty much all there is we're gonna put this back together and yeah we're gonna install windows so i'm not gonna show the install process the windows install process is just like every other model well i guess to access the windows installer usb oh yeah they did pop this cover out already because it does pop down. Actually, I think the battery that's bulging out caused it to pop out. So we're gonna put these screws back in. So if you do have some trouble removing this bottom cover, it's very likely um, you have to pry it up with a pry tool. 
and this one the battery like going bad and bulging up is actually what helped pop the cover out and make it easier so here you can see as I put the screw in it's like clipping in alright grab the screw oh there's one other thing for I guess I'll show how to get the windows um, installer started or running so first you'll want to create a Windows 10 USB um, you can do that with any Windows 10 computer so if you have a friend or maybe you can use a public computer or something that has Windows 10 on it you can create the installer you'll just need a USB I think that's at least 8 gigs um, 16 gigs to be safe and then um, Microsoft has a link to create a Windows USB installer. You just search Windows 10 USB installer and make sure you're going to the Microsoft website. I have a video showing how to do like a in place like upgrade, but it you can use the same tool to do the Windows 10 install. So if you need that, just let me know and I will guide you to that website or the link. All right, so I got that. All right, so I created a Windows 10 USB installer on this thing and we're just gonna open it up okay so oh yeah the battery like and also because the rubber things missing so the way you boot up to Windows um, 10 what you do is you press the power button and then once the computer's starting on you want to press F9 okay and then when you press F9 it'll go to the boot menu and here you can see, so your USB will show up as different. Mine shows as this SanDisk thing, but that's what I'm booting from. And also I, cre I created the USB with both Windows 64-bit um, and 32-bit, so it asks me that option, but we're going to use 64-bit, of course. Um, but that's pretty much it. Then you just go through the whole process of Windows 10 install. Um, it'll start up, and then it'll ask you the language and everything. And then you just go through that menu. Um, the other thing I guess I'll show is the hard drive. When it gets to that point, it's going to ask like um, where you want to install. So that's also a simple process. But Okay, so here you see it says the languages. I'm just going to leave it all on English. Okay, I just press tab to go to the next one. Press next, enter, install now. Press enter, wait for that. I'm going to plug this in right now. Okay. All right, so we'll just plug in the power cable. All right, and then we can go to, oops, I didn't show what it was showing. Let me go back one. So it, it shows this menu. I just push space to click accept and then press enter. And then usually I'll go to custom and here you'll see the hard drive. If it has anything, I would just delete all the partitions so that there's only the drive zero. And then I'll just press enter there and Windows will install. But anyways, just go through the prompts on the screen after that. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe. Help others find my videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.